Okay, a very brief history of logarithms. So in the Western world during the Renaissance, science was flourishing. People observing the natural world, collecting all sorts of data, making predictions, playing with equations, doing beautiful, beautiful work. They were collecting data. That means they were collecting numbers. That means they were working with numbers. So they collect data, say, of some phenomenon. They make it like five data values like this and want to work at the average. That means they have to add them up. Okay, adding them up is fine. You can do that. It's a bit tedious but doable. No calculators back then, all you know, either in your head or on pencil and paper. But sometimes they'd have to also multiply numbers. Okay, adding up is tedious but doable. But imagine trying to multiply those numbers. That is truly horrendous. Multiplication is really tough to do. Very much prone to errors and very much just unfun. Very hard, very tedious. Multiplication was actually holding back science. Doing multiplication problems turned out this basic arithmetic was holding back all of science. That's crazy. Basic arithmetic holding back all of science. Then the Scottish mathematician by the name of John Napier thought, hang on, there's got to be a way to convert multiplication problems that are problematic into simpler addition problems. That should unlock science. So he thought about this for a long, long while. He lived about 1550 to 1617. Actually, not about exactly that. So he lived the late 1500s. He must have thought about this problem for decades because he came up with a, very, a way to do this, a way to convert multiplication problems, tedious multiplication problems, into less tedious addition. But it's a very strange method. In fact, by our eyes, it's a very strange method to do, indeed. So let me give you a sense of what he was thinking. He must have been thinking about this for decades. I don't know what made him come up with it, but it was this. Imagine two roads, one road of finite length, another road of infinite length going off to infinity. And imagine two particles, one moving along the road of finite length, one moving along the other road of infinite length, starting off at the same speed. In fact, this one here would always move at constant speed, so at equal time intervals, it would move equal amounts. This one, however, at equal time intervals, kept changing its velocity. In fact, it slowed down. For example, over one time interval, it might move, move one-sixth of the distance. The next time interval, it would move one-sixth of what's left. Next time interval, it move one-sixth of what's left again. So actually, its velocity would decrease as it went along. Okay, why are you thinking of that? I do not know. But then he realized something, that if you look at the distance, you know, where this particle is at some time, if the distance left is, say, n feet or n meters or something, and look at how far this guy moved during the time it got there, say, m meters, he realized that looking at the ratio of these two distances actually was equivalent to turning a multiplication problem into an addition problem. So you had this sort of strange ratio of arithmetic, arithmetic distances going on here that in essence converted changed multiplication to addition. So his method was strange, it was bizarre, it was complicated, but he gave it a name that seemed appropriate for his method. Ratios of arithmetic values, logos, arithmos, logarithms. He called his technique logarithms. Okay, great. So these logarithms, this very complicated theory, did in fact turn multiplication problems into addition problems. The trouble is, his method was bizarre, and not many people understood what he was doing. Next problem, how can he make his method accessible to scientists? So what he did then, he worked on creating tables of values, logarithm tables, log tables, so that people didn't actually have to understand his theory, all they could do is just look up the log tables and convert multiplication problems into addition problems. I'll show you what a log table looks like next. All right, so here's the very basic idea of a log table, a very simple one here. So this is the sort of thing Napier created for scientists. So this would actually convert multiplication problems into addition problems. Now, you know, I've done a very simplified version here, but let's say we need to work out two times three. Okay, I know the answer is six, but as an example, well, how we could convert two times three, this multiplication problem into addition one is as follows. Go to Napier's table, look up the value of two, go to the table, it's what, 0.301. Uh, look at the value for three, 0.477, and now add those instead. And what do we get? We'll get 0.778. Uh, Great. And now go back to the log table and see where 0.778 is on the table. And it's there. The answer is 6. 2 times 3 must be 6. So without needing to understand Napier's approach to logarithms, you can just use these tables and actually do all that complicated multiplication by turning them into addition problems just like this. This essentially is what a log table does. In fact, this is a log table. Grand, brilliant, Napier saved the day. He actually did unlock the progress of science for the 1600s, 1700s, and so on. But here's the funny thing. It was about the mid-1700s that mathematicians realized, hang on, there's something going on with these numbers. We know what they really are. So it took 200 years almost for mathematicians to realize that logarithms are actually just exponents. They're powers. So it's unfortunate. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Napier was brilliant. 
people did not realize that all logarithms were were just exponents backwards for, for another 150 years. By that time, the name logarithm had stuck and society wasn't going to stop calling logarithms. And here we are 400 years later still calling logarithms. And it would be so much easier for students if we could call them powers for what they really are. Because working with powers makes good logical sense, doesn't hurt our brains. It's not a scary word. Powers are fine. Unfortunately, as a good nod to Napier, the word logarithm has stuck for these 400 years, and here we are in the 21st century. Of course, also the reason for Napier's work has gone out of the way for this 21st century. If we really had to do multiplication problems now, we use our calculators. Great. So now the question is, why should we care about logarithms to this day?